In this video, I'm going to explain how James Webb orbits around nothing. Watch the complete video to get all the related information. It will be 1.5 million kilometers or 1 million miles from Earth at what is known as the second Lagrange point or L2 for the James Webb Space Telescope which will be 1.5 million kilometers or 1 million miles away from the Sun. This orbit is unique because it allows the telescope to track the Earth as it revolves around the Sun. Because of this, the telescope is protected from the Sun and Earth's heat and light by the enormous Sun shield on the satellite and the Moon. Infrared light, which may be perceived as heat, is the primary focus of Webb's research. The telescope must be insulated from bright, hot sources since it will study extremely weak infrared emissions from distant objects. The satellite itself is included in this. The sun shield protects the spacecraft's delicate mirrors and equipment from the sun, earth and moon. A tremendous temperature differential exists between the telescope's hot and cold sides. You can boil water on the hot side and freeze nitrogen on the cold side. The telescope will be tested at 225 degrees below 0 degrees Celsius, minus 370 Fahrenheit. Sun shields are only effective when the Sun, Earth and Moon all point in the same direction. Otherwise, they'll only provide the telescope with the equivalent of SPF 1 million sunscreen. So the telescope will be located at Lagrange point 2. The three-body problem was solved by Joseph Louis Lagrange, an 18th century mathematician. Is it possible for three bodies to circle each other and maintain their location relative to each other in a stable configuration? Five possible solutions to this puzzle have been found, and they're known as the five Lagrange points in honor of their discoverer. An object's centripetal force is equivalent to the gravitational attraction of a massive mass at Lagrange points. The L4 and L5 points form no equilateral triangles, instead they form a straight line from L1 to L5. The Lagrange point, L1, is 1.5 million kilometers from Earth and has hosted several solar observatories such as Discover, Wind and Soho. WMAP, Herschel and Planck have all been in orbit at the Sun-Earth L2 point, where Webb will be stationed. One of these five points makes it easier for an object like a spaceship to maintain its position relative to the other two bodies, like the Sun and the Earth. In reality, the orbits of L4 and L5 are self-stabilizing meaning that nothing has to be thrown into them to keep them in place. The L4 and L5 locations on the Sun-Earth axis contain several tiny asteroids. There are metastable places in the solar system, which means that unless they are kept in place, things around these points will drift away into their orbits around the Sun. This is why L4 and L5 do not gather items. What if Webb is circling the Sun at a distance that is greater than the distance between Earth and the Sun? Usually, yes, but the balance of the combined gravitational attraction of the Sun and the Earth at the L2 point ensures that Webb will keep up with the Earth as it orbits around the Sun. At this time, the gravitational forces of the Sun and Earth are strong enough to maintain a spacecraft in orbit around L2 with comparatively minimal rocket fuel. Webb will circulate around L2 rather than being routed to the ground at L2. It's hard to believe, but Webb's orbit around the Earth is about the same size as the Moon's orbit around our planet. Due to Webb's long duration orbit, the telescope will never be obscured by Earth or Moon shadow. Webb, unlike Hubble, will offer an unobstructed vision that will enable scientists to work around the clock. We can easily communicate with Webb because of its location at L2. We can communicate with it when the Earth spins using the Deep Space Network, which has three massive antennas on the ground in Australia, Spain and California. Webb uses the DSN to uplink and downlink data up to twice daily during ordinary operations. The observatory can carry out series of instructions such as pointing and making observations on its own. This institute typically uploads a week's worth of commands all at once and makes changes as often as is necessary. At L2, Webb will take around 30 days to reach the start of its orbit a quarter of the way there. However, it will only take 3 days to reach the Moon's orbit. Okay, getting Webb into an orbit around L2 is like trying to climb a hill by pedaling a bicycle aggressively just at the beginning of the climb, creating enough energy and speed to ride the rest of the way up the hill and barely make it to the summit. 
instability exists at the L2 axis. These locations are known as Lagrange points and they are the places where the Earth and Sun's gravitational forces are equal to each other. The Earth and the Sun line up with three of the points. They're referred to as L1 through L3 in this context. It's referred to as L4 and L5 because they create an equilateral triangle with the Earth and the Sun. The last two points are sturdily anchored in the ground. If you put anything there, it will behave like a ball at the bottom of an empty eggshell, rolling up the shell somewhat before returning to its original position in the middle. It's no longer possible for it to sit stationary anymore. Even in the context of the L2 point, there is no evidence of this. At least in the plane of the Earth-Sun system, the L2 point is unstable, as I said before. Then it might be that it's stable in a direction that's orthogonal to the plane. There's no other way to explain how the L2 point was so readily orbited. In addition, it must effectively circle the Sun like everything else. The Lagrange points are where you may achieve this, and you want to be able to communicate with it at all times. As a result of the fact that the sum of the parts is zero, gravitational forces such as those of the Sun, the Earth, the centrifugal forces play a role. The Lagrange points are where the vectors cancel each other when drawn correctly. Put another way, the net force on each one is zero. However, even a little force, such as a planet's gravitational pull, may be enough to destroy it. The L4 and L5 points are now steady. The probe will be pushed back to the center by the combined force of the three forces described above, even if the knock is modest. It resembles a ball at the bottom of the valley in size. Forces at work pull the object back to the center even if it is pushed slightly out of place. Thus, it becomes steady. The three factors are in play when it comes to Lagrange points. Using them stabilizes L4 and L5. L2 is steadier though. Because of this, I'm stumped as to how they plan to orbit it. The instability may be just superficial or weak. This was all from my side to guide you about how James Webb orbits around nothing. I hope you liked the video. Kindly subscribe to the Gravity channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates about the new space inventions and the outer world.